Um, in accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA 10 4 6 PL 1975 C231 S1, amended in 2006, C70 S2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known, the agenda of this meeting to the Asbury Park Press and the new coaster <laughs> <laughs> on January 8, 2021 via email. Copies of this notice have also been placed at the administration buildings, bulletin boards, district schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department, and filed with the city clerk on January 8, 2021. The mission of the Asbury Park Public School District is to provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skill and character to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Roll call, please, Mr. Hastings. Okay, um, we're going to do the roll call. Everybody is muted. Please unmute yourself. Uh, State here and then remute, please. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Here. Ms. Breach? Ms. Cook? Ms. Cook? Here. Thank you. Mr. Grillo? Here. Mr. Lotaraco? Here. Mr. Remy? Here. Mr. Saunders? Ms. Lazinski? Here. And Ms. Etienne? Here. If we can oh. please raise for the rise for the flag salute. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so tonight we're gonna have a quick presentation. We're gonna do that right now so we get it out of the way. All right, we have uh, Mr. Jerry Connedy. He's a partner at Holman Friendly Allison. Uh, they're our audit firm. Uh, they come out to the district each year and conduct our annual financial audit. Uh, they spend a couple of weeks at the beginning of, of uh, the summer. They spend some time in the fall uh, going through all our financial statements and our accounting systems, uh, review our purchase orders, uh, review our grants and our compliance issues, and uh, then issue their report, uh, the CAFR, uh, or our annual financial report. So uh, on the agenda tonight at 7 p.m. will be the acceptance of the audit for the board to vote on. That's a document that we need to then provide to the county and upload to the um, the uh, annual report repository with the state. So it's available to the public. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Kennedy so he can uh, give you the uh, impressions from the auditor and give you a snapshot of the audit for the year ending June 30th, 2020. Uh, and then after his presentation, uh, he's obviously available for any questions you might have. Jerry. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Hastings. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me here virtually tonight, everybody. Um, we're here a little later than we, we prefer to be. Um, unfortunately, the state of New Jersey kind of delayed all school districts across the state of New Jersey. Um, We've been waiting on reports for them to to issue. Um, they have normally our, our audit is due by December 5th, uh, given the delays from the state of New Jersey, as well as complications from from COVID-19 uh, this year. They've extended that deadline um, to February. So although we're here tonight, we are timely with all uh, statutory requirements and filings. Um, so there's there's two places like I, I generally like to refer people to if, if you take nothing else away from from the presentation tonight um, the first of which is on page one of the report which is referred to as the letter of transmittal um, and then page 19 of the report which is management's discussion and analysis um, those two um, schedules or, or, or letters in the audit report although they're unaudited they, they give a nice clear snapshot of the financial statements and, and the district as a whole. It kind of shows where the district was over the past year, um, how they got to, to where they are at year end, 
um, as well as gives you a little bit of a picture of, of where the district's heading moving forward and some of the major initiatives that are going on. Um, I'm happy to report that we have an unmodified opinion on our financial statements. That is the best opinion that we can give, saying that there are no modifications necessary to bring us into compliance with generally accepted accounting principles. Um, at year end, um, what I really just want to kind of make mention of tonight, um, obviously, as you have your budget season kind of rolling around, um, is where the district stands with its fund balance at, at June 30th, 2020. Um, so total fund balance was $11.6 million. Uh, of that, we had about $1.9 million set aside in some reserves for capital maintenance and extraordinary items. Um, we had about $161,000 of encumbrances that were outstanding at year end. We also had allocated, uh, when, when the board approved its fiscal year 21 budget, uh, the board had approved utilizing about $4.2 million of uh, fund balance in the fiscal year 21 budget. Um, it left about $1.25 million of unassigned fund balance. That's the uh, maximum that is allowed to be kept on hand at year end. Um, and then it left excess surplus, it's referred to as uh, $4.15 million. So pretty consistent with what you had uh, utilized in your fiscal year 21 budget. Um, that's the amount that the district will be required to utilize when balancing the uh, 2022 budget. Um, one thing I do want to just make mention of, um, we, we talked with with Mr. Hastings and, and the administrative team um, about the food service fund. Um, there was a big loss in the food service fund this past year, which we've seen at uh, most of the school districts that we've seen, obviously, with uh, the, the decrease in, in the usage there. Um, so just to make sure that we're monitoring that as we're going and making sure that that should transfers be necessary, that we're making whatever uh, uh, transfers that are needed to make sure that that fund stays uh, whole. Um, we also had to perform a lot of additional testing on our federal and our state grants, um, which is referred to as a single audit, which is an additional layer of testing uh, over and above just a financial statement audit. Um, I'm very happy to report that in all of our testing, uh, we had no comments or recommendations. Um, everything went very smoothly, uh, especially uh, given, given our COVID uh, situation that we've been working through throughout the, the audit season. So. Um, you know, before I open it up for questions, I really do just want to uh, give, I, I say it each year, but I really have to give a big heartfelt thank you to um, to, to Jeff, uh, Mr. Hastings, Ms. Ivy, um, Ms. Gray, and, and all of their staff. Um, it was a very complicated year uh, to be doing an, an audit during, um, and nobody ever wants to see the auditors. So, uh, you know, I can't thank you guys enough for all the courtesies extended to myself and my team uh, throughout the process. So, um, I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody may have, if they have any. Okay, I don't see any questions at this point. Uh, the audit has been provided to all the board members for the review. And obviously, as you get time to go through the document or have questions that, that come up, you can certainly uh, come visit us at central office or shoot me an email and we can arrange uh, you know, uh, a conversation with the auditor, myself, and, and the board member to get those questions answered, and also obviously forward those questions and answers to the rest of our board. Uh, so at this point, if we don't have any questions for Mr. Conaty, I'd like to thank him and his firm for, for their professionalism and again, working with us through the various COVID uh, uh, restrictions and scenarios and, and working with us in terms of getting paperwork back and forth electronically instead of visiting us in person. Uh, and then we appreciate all the effort they put in to making sure that our filings were on time. Great, Jerry, thank you so much and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you everybody, have a great night. Good work. At this point in time, we're gonna do the, um, the committee reports. Uh, Connie, can you speak? I see her. I don't know. I see her. Yeah, her video is down. She said. Okay. Um, okay. Let's start off with the uh, policy. Joe, you have anything to report? There we go. <laughs> uh, with policy, there are uh, some things on the agenda that are going to be uh, uh, second readings. Um, we had a policy alert um, that um, was 222. 
and um, we had some uh, revisions on, uh, and you'll see the list uh, on the agenda. We had a few um, uh, revisions for first readings, and uh, the new ones are lead testing of water in schools um, and remote public board meetings during a declared emergency, uh, family leave. Let's see, uh, and uh, and the rest were just revisions on on the policies and and regulations. There wasn't there. You'll see one on there also about uh, a couple of abolished policies having to do with New Jersey Family Leave Insurance Program and school safety. Are there any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Gorillo. Um, Curriculum instruction, Ms. Cook. Okay. Um, we'll come back to that. Um, can we have athletics, Ms. Breach? So give me, give me a second. Give me a second. I'm trying to get my uh, info up. I'm a little problem with my computer. Can you bypass me? Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Ladaraka. <laughs> okay. Uh, with regard to finance, uh, first thing we should point out in, in light of the deadline for submitting the tentative budget to the county, we're going to need to schedule uh, a meeting on Thursday, March 18th prior to our, uh, our March 25th board meeting to uh, go through the budget and uh, have tentative approval to give to the county. We may then have to also adjust for the final approval, uh, our April uh, board meeting, which is currently April 22nd. So please be aware as, uh, Jeff, Sancha, others put out uh, information that may be changing or adding um, meetings as we go into March uh, or shifting times as we go into April. Um, we're hoping in about a, a week to 10 days, as the auditor just uh, alluded to, we're putting together the budget. Uh, remember the state is, is doing two things it we were under the assumption going in that they were cutting our our aid uh 5.8 million and then doing a formula that says our um our local fair share is still uh over 10 million short so we're we're addressing both those things and, and in about 10 days we're open to put out we're really planning on 2.5 million as a revenue increase. And then we can get out to the board kind of buckets of other information. As the auditor mentioned, there, uh, there could be operational rollover. There can, there's going to be uh, savings due to resignations and retirements where the district has determined they can combine jobs and, and not necessarily replace them. Uh, we talked about some, uh, so, some specific cuts then of, of what's remaining. Uh, we're looking at our uh, current curriculum contract and, and whether we go to a process with more of train the trainer after we've had that contract for about three or four years with that company that we can make a substantial reduction to and try to get out kind of the, the, the general areas and you see some numbers as we try to hit that. But um, before I mention a couple of other things, then getting some texts and I guess the governor spoke, do we have a new number we want to throw out there about what we're going to have to 
uh, hit in terms of the budget, Jeff? Yeah, so uh, the governor gave his address, his budget address on Tuesday, as is required uh, by statute. Um, they are then required to release state aid numbers for school districts within 48 hours after his address. Uh, the number that was released showed a reduction in adjustment aid for the district of about $6.67 million. We have been looking at 5.8 to 6, and the number uh, that came out was uh, obviously much higher than that. So that's the number we're working with, and, and the number we'll have to address. Okay. So since our meeting now it's it's another million dollars of uh, uh about about eight hundred thousand dollars uh additional yeah okay thank you um so we'll we'll be getting out more information then leading up to this march 18 meeting will be then as i understand it just about the budget and our regular business meeting is on the 25th. Correct. Okay. Uh, we just heard about the uh, comprehensive annual audit. I think that's, uh, that's very good news. And, uh, and again, kudos to uh, Jeff, Ivy, Sanja for uh, their work on that. Uh, there was a walkthrough at, at Obama where we can discussed with building and grounds. And uh, the other bad news is the elevator bid at, at uh, MLK Upper Elementary came back significantly higher than what our consultant had estimated. Uh, the committee discussed and uh, uh, with administration and we're uh, looking at canceling the bid and now re-advertising at a later date. And that uh, that concludes funding. Any questions? I just had one. Uh, Dominic, are you speaking of having another uh, finance committee in between uh, now and me? Just to yes. Yeah, so we'll have, we'll have a meeting prior to and uh, and try to put a little more uh, meat on the bones of uh, of the groupings of what we're doing, and then uh, prior to our our full board meeting. Yeah, the Thursday night meetings for that month is going to be moved up one week. So we were supposed to have the meetings on the 18th. Those Thursday night meetings will be moved up to the week before, 11th. I had to do quick math, sorry. Any questions, comments? Hi, Dom. Yeah. Sorry, I, um, I have a question about the 800,000 and change. What, is there a specific bucket that that's, that that's from no. maybe it's a question for jeff too but is there like a specific bucket that it it's, it's... no no that that's just the the new number of the state state aid reduction so there, there has to be a comprehensive look where we thought we were hitting a number of 5.8 million through both revenue increases and cuts and now it's eight hundred thousand more than that at least Tom I just had one more comment it would help be helpful if everybody actually knew what the formula was because then you could be prepared and actually know what your numbers are going to be before you know the day of the budget address and now you found out that something's wrong it's different uh, I, i'm constantly amazed by the budget process followed in new jersey from the governor and the legislature on down i would uh, i would agree that 
there, there could be a, a better way to do this where you don't get a hard number until a few weeks when you've got to finalize the budget. Uh, but I, I think we're, we're, we're attacking the, uh, the, the governmental status quo on that. Well, I think we're, look, we're about three years into S2 now. Um, so we pretty much do know, know that this is happening every year where we estimate one number and it's a little higher. So I think we should, um, you know, moving forward, um, try to do a little extra because keep it, we keep in mind knowing that this is the number that we think, but it's probably going to be slightly more. Um, so it's, it's almost like we're going to cut, we're going to have to cut deeper in anticipation of this happening each and every time. Yeah, we're going to have three more years. I can submit that. Uh, you know, we can don't hold your breath. But, uh, I saw that our state senator has, uh, is proposing uh, a, a bill whereby cuts for districts like ours will be $500,000 less if we choose to engage in, in the uh, assessment and planning of some kind of regionalization. We can also, and and I'm uh, Barb gave me some comments, and I'll finalize that. And we can make the request to him that also can there be any extension of of S two showing what we've accomplished. You know, I, I think I'd like it to be out there as to what the district has accomplished in in these now three budgetary years of of S2, there's been, uh, uh, there's been real movement toward uh, greater efficiency while not losing educational uh, quality in, in what we've been doing. And we've been moving the local fair share uh, that started, I believe just prior to our S2 budgets, our local fair share was was around seven million, and I think after this budget year, we will be at. Uh, check me here, Jeff, but I think around thirteen million. Right. So at the fiscal twenty one, we're probably around ten point seven, and as you said, if we add another two and a half, that'll put us to about thirteen. So there's been great progress. So we're going to move on to the next. Um, Connie, are you ready? Yeah, I have my uh, audio up on my videos. So I'm just having problems with my computer. So can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, so we can hear you. Okay. So we met on the on the uh, 17th. We spoke about the upcoming. Uh, Section three of our winter sports events, which is going to start in March, which includes uh, the volleyball and our track. Um, we also were speaking about our status of our fields, trying to get prepared for our spring season. Uh, Mr. Sosa is working on that with our landscapers. Uh, also looking into possibly getting an indoor, purchasing indoor batting cages to help, and looking into the status of our outdoor batting cages, along with some track repairs that need to be done. Um, the one thing that came out the past month was um, it was advertised on some, some web services that we had a, uh, our sports were being streamed. Um, that's not correct. Uh, we do not have an agreement as of now with you know a, a sports channel to to be streamed. Some of our uh, opponents do have access for streaming equipment, and they are going to share that with us. But as of right now, uh, we're looking into possibly uh, APTV or some other affiliate that we can get that even maybe having something with our own kids uh, to do something with some streaming. It's, it's probably not going to happen this season, but hopefully we'll look into that into the fall. Um, the governor, of course, you know, did change the uh, spectators for indoor sporting events to allow two individuals per student. Um, of course, in the springtime, that's going to change. Outdoor track and everything's going to – we'll be outside, so that whole – waiting for the update on that. Um, we're still working with the virtual award ceremony to incorporate both last year awards recipients and this year's award recipients. 
hopefully next month we'll have a little bit more um, you know date on when that's going to happen we'll, we're going to have to you know get some of the students you know a lot of them are at college right now to try to get them back to to do some filming and we're also looking into possibly rehabbing tennis courts um i have an out outside individual that might want to help us um but he is in the middle of some um personal uh tragedy in his life so that's going to take a little back seat for now hopefully next month i'll have a little bit more with that um the agenda, the meetings are, you know, on our website. If you guys have any questions regarding some of the things that were on the uh, the minutes, I, I welcome any any questions, and hopefully I can answer them. Nope. Any questions or comments? No. Okay. Um, we're going to move on to uh, buildings and grounds. Hello, good evening. Um, so Buildings of Ground, we met uh, February the 18th, um, and we went over a few things. Uh, we had a facility use request. Uh, basically, the district received an inquiry from Ultimate Sports Camp um, stating that they wanted to use our facilities. They would pay us. Um, they wanted to use the high school, the high school fields, um, through June 24th and August 20th uh, for 200 students. And they said that they claimed that they would pay us $250 to use our gym and cafeteria and the fields in the lake. Um, so we just asked for a formal proposal to be submitted. Um, so once that proposal do come, um, we're gonna do our due diligence and you know see if that's the right fit for us. Um, we also received another inquiry from Lake House Music. Um, they inquired about conducting the softball game in June, but they haven't submitted a proposal as well. So we're waiting on that. Um, following up with COVID-19 protocols, um, the custodial department continues to follow all sanitizing and COVID-19 protocols, um, hourly wipe downs, uh, there's hand sanitizing stations uh, and disinfectant spray. Uh, um, Sorry, had to switch to AirPod. Um, so as Dom stated um, previously, uh, we did receive uh, uh, proposals, well, the bids for the elevators at Dr. Martin Luther King uh, upper, upper Elementary School. Uh, the bids were higher than the budget, so we're going to um, cancel those and re-advertise. Um, moving on, we did have the central office um, we continue with the central office relocation. We had the walkthrough on Tuesday. Um, I have a scope here, a copy of the scope. So basically we walked through with the architect. The architect, uh, the estimate total project, this is just you know general construction, uh, skywalk exterior reconstruction, uh, the ceilings, the floors, paint, uh, changing the toilets, the toilets to adults, instead of uh, to, to perform up the code for adults, came out to about $2,183,965. And that's not including the work that needs to be done in the stairwells, the exterior, uh, parking lot upgrades, and electrical service upgrades, and also furnishing. That doesn't include any of that. Um, also, uh, we had the, ASIP business case and projects. Um, we were contacted uh, by the president of Energy Systems Group. Um, they wanted to, they changed their project lead, so now a conference call needs to be held with the new lead and the district and district architect is being scheduled. And then the last, we had two uh, proposals um, from Charity Kings. Uh, the first proposal was a partnership. Uh, improving improving barack obama elementary school um they said at no cost they were going to improve the the buildings in the ground the fields they were going to improve them they're going to do all the repairs the electric the plumbing hvac um they're trying to i guess they they have they submitted a proposal we looked at the proposal this who are uh, to district attorney 
that's where we're at with it right now. That's basically buildings and grounds. That's the updates. We did the posting like we stated the other day. And yeah. Thank you, Mr. I have a question. Okay. Yes. So, Mr. Remy, you said uh, for the high school, the use of that, of the high school from June 24th to August something, they, they, they want to pay us $250? Correct. From June 24th to August 20th, they would like to pay us $250,000 for oh, the $250, gym. $250,000. Okay. Yes. Oh, $250,000. Yes. Um, to use the gym, cafeteria, uh, the fields, and the lake. Um, so we ask that a formal proposal be submitted. Um, so we're just waiting on that with all the details and everything so they can be considered. Okay, thank you. And one other question, if I may, in regards, oh, sure. to, the, uh, in regards to the Obama building, um, no you said 2.1 mil, and that does not yes. include the furnace. Were they able to give an estimate on the cost of that, of replacing that 100 year old oh, no, furnace? I Oh no! Is the um, no the furniture fur furniture is what I was saying. Um, they did they didn't mention that. I'm gonna ask the architect. Okay. It's, it's not it's not on here as well. It's not on here on the scope. Mr. Uh, Remy, if I may, it's more yes, yes. Thank you. All right, Bob. Yep. From my understanding, from uh, Mr. Hastings, if if I need to be corrected, that the boiler is fine right now. They it was upgraded a little while ago. Is that not correct? Right. So our boilers are old. Uh, however, they work. And our issue with the boilers basically is that right now they're either on or off. Uh, we have a bit of an issue with, with temperature control and control systems on the boilers. So uh, we did look at that as part of potentially the ESIP project. Uh, and we've also spoken to the architect about uh, what the options are there, but that is not included in the uh, price that uh, Mr. Remy referenced by the architect. Correct. Is it possible that we would be able to get an estimate in case we have any repairs? Yes, we can ask the architect for an estimated cost. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Remy. Uh, no problem. Anytime. Just the and, and I just wanted to clarify, uh, and Mr. Remy stated that we did have a uh, cost uh, analysis done by the architect, SSP Architectural. Uh, the priority one items, which were most of the items that he referenced, uh, totaled about $2.1, $2.4 million. Uh, and then there was a priority two, uh, which was significantly less, but that was about Eighty thousand, if I recall. Maybe Mr. Remy can correct me on that. But about three hundred eighty thousand more. Yes, um, I see here. It has about three hundred and twenty, three hundred and twenty thousand. Right. So I think total cost for both of those uh, priority items would be again back to the number that we've talked about, which is about two and a half million. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, back to this uh, ultimate sports camp. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're starting to talk about something that's uh, some some uh, significant dollars here. Have we ever worked with them before? I mean, um, I understand the committee saying, uh, you know, we want to see a formal proposal, but I mean, Maybe we want to do some initial vetting on Ultimate Sports Camp. Uh, I don't know if the administration can do that. To, uh, this might be, you know, a serious, significant proposal for us to to consider, and uh, I'm sure it's going to be a little more complex in terms of dealing with things, but. Um, uh, I'll, I'll throw that. I'll throw that out. Um, my, my second one is just a comment. I mean, I, I read through those two proposals. Uh, I'm all for people. Uh, a, anyone who's going to be supportive of the district, but from my 
former life on, you know, I'd, I'd like to see, uh, I would typically, and what the district has been doing takes the lead on seeking um, grant funding. And then if there can be partnerships there, knowing what grant I'm going for, I would then discuss with a nonprofit do you want to be a partner to this grant and determine the details as to who's doing what and, and, and vetting that partner as uh, I'll leave this to Adam, but as those proposals were drafted, I, I didn't see a value to a general agreement to be doing, uh, to committing to a, a grant writing partner. So, if I, if I can, um, but yeah, without getting too much into uh, attorney-client advice, I did give uh, an opinion to the board president with regard to those proposals, um, and um, yeah, the the short answer is those proposals could not be acted on uh, at this time by the board. Uh, to the extent the board does have an interest in partnering, um, there's a way that that should be done. Um, typically, when we're talking about then a concession contract, which um, should either be uh, awarded through the bidding process or a competitive contracting slash RFP process. Um, so there is a process for those types of services to the extent the board wishes to engage uh, in, in or, or solicit bids or RFP submissions. Uh, certainly, I can work with. Uh, the, the administration and the business office on um, putting together some specifications so that we can um, move ahead uh, if that's what the board would like to do. So, so two things um, on on the, um, the ultimate sports camp. What the, the steps that we I think that we're going to take is we're going to have them fill out a standard. Um, facilities request form, and then that's what Adam um, suggested as the next step is to be so that we can begin the vetting process because we don't, we really want to consider all. Um, all Correct. So that's, I where, that's where we're started. And then the other thing is that Adam said that he was going to make sure that if we had an agreement with, with them, that it was our agreement and we outlined everything so that everything, um, we covered everything, so that there was no holes where, where anything can happen. You had some- Yeah, yeah, yeah if I could. Um, I just caution the board on discussing this too much in public yet, as there probably are going to be some negotiations that are needed, um, and we're probably going to enter, you know, if we were to move forward, and if the board looked favorably upon the, you know, the application or, or the uh, expression of interest, we would probably move ahead with um, a little uh, something that's a little bit different from uh, your typical facilities use uh, form. Uh, I think that uh, an, an, an organization such as this or the use such as this requires um, a little bit more of an in-depth contract so that things are spelled out. Um, so, you know, we do have kind of a framework of what is the interest is and a, um, you know, again, a verbal, uh, I should say, not, not really verbal, but an informal uh, offer of an amount, uh, but a lot of the details remain sketchy. Um, and so, uh, you know, to the extent that the board wants to discuss this any further, um, my suggestion would be that we do it in executive session, given the fact that we're probably talking about contract negotiations, and that is more, you know, more appropriately discussed in executive session. Okay, and then, and then the second comment was about the two proposals. Um, Adam did advise that they they would be concession, but we did speak about how um, it would benefit the district to have something like that. So we spoke about maybe drawing up a bid or proposal and taking proposals to see if there are groups that would like to help us in, in obtaining um, grants to fix different areas of the school district. And again, we certainly can do that. I just need to get a direction from the board, and I'm happy to help out in um, making sure that everything conforms with uh, the requirements that we have 
under the different code. So I have a question. This is Angela. Um, do we not have a grant writer ourselves, Mr. Hastings? Yes, we do. So are we not able, why aren't we able to use our grant writer? Because I'm, I'm believing that the same thing that's available to other groups is available to our grant writer. There's feedback. Yes, we do have an individual on our team that writes grants. Um, this is not a result of what they're not able to do. This is more in response to us having received a proposal from the outside and bringing it now to the board. Are we voting on this tonight? No. no, no, we're just but we're just dis no. we're discussing it tonight to the extent that we it's it's definitely an open conversation. Yes, we have a grant writer, but there's grant grant researchers too. So if if we don't if we don't put something out for bid or something, we can try to put that grant writer on that task. But at this point, I think in the district's history, we have to start looking at different ways to generate income. Um, so even if we don't go with this proposal, we have to start looking at different different ways. Basically, I just repeated myself. Different ways to generate income. That's that's where we are. We we cannot continue doing what we we've been doing. Now the grant writer has been here. We haven't directed him to do this particular thing. So if that's what we want to do, then we can do that, or we can put it out for bid and see if we can get professionals that that can concentrate on, on doing that. Because our grant writer is also writing grants for other things that have to do with educational aspects of the district. I just have a comment, right, if I may. I think that um, right now our concentration is uh, try moving central office and then uh, we can think about ideas to fill the rest of Barack Obama so that it benefits our district and our children. Um, so I think that if we're getting it, we're getting, it's good to talk about ideas, but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves right now uh, in, in talking about, you know, different areas that we might be able to write grants for at this point. It's just my own opinion. Any additional comments? Um, yeah, I was going to ask, um, before, before these two uh, proposals, were there any proposals prior, like I guess prior before me coming on the board, were there any proposals before this, anyone, any organizations stating that they would, you know, write grants or pay for certain things, was there anything like that? Uh, yeah, no. Under my, uh, since I've been the superintendent of schools, this is the first time that I've received something of this nature. Okay. And, right. and supporting and understanding the um, ongoing focus in terms of communication. As I received this information in my office, I wanted to make sure that in a very timely manner, per the board's directive, they received that communication. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Can, a couple questions. One, um, the different nonprofits on there, do they have, um, I work at the nonprofit industry and um, when it comes to nonprofits, what the board really needs to see is current 990s, audited financial statements. And if this is really something that we want to, to um, you know, go forward with, then we really want to get the best of the best. Um, we'd also want to see a record of of where you know where these are there any success stories or that kind of thing. So I, I agree with Barbara that we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. I think the idea is is fantastic, and we've been saying for a long time about how we need an education foundation um, that is separate from the schools, like other school districts. Um, I just think that it needs to be done the right way and we need to have all the, you know, 
we need to have a you know a, a kind of a, a history of 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 a, of of where there's been success with these different nonprofits. Okay, um, I, have, I have another uh, question as well. So, like, uh, so we did the walkthrough. So, what what's the next process? What's the next step? Because, uh, cause, because this whole thing with this walkthrough and this relocation, I'm looking at articles. I'm reading articles from back in the day when I was an undergrad. So I'm talking over, you know, like I graduated college, undergrad in like 2014. And these are things that's still going on still. So like, what's next? Like, what's, what needs to happen? We need to get a definite answer. Are we going to do it or are we not going to do it? So that's all I'm trying to figure out. Like, what's the next step moving forward? Can anyone answer that? Uh, it's it's sportless. And I agree with you, Anthony, that we have to make a decision probably tonight about what direction we're going to go in, because you know the, the lease on that other building is going to be up, I believe, in a year and a half. And if there are things that have to be done, they have to be they start right now. You know whether uh, you know financials, uh, the financial issue has to be addressed, and then um, you know whatever kind of bids and this sort of thing that have to go out for the different items that are on that that um punch list okay thank you and um uh, speaking of financials is is this something like uh we can get grants for or this is something that the district would have to pay for completely out of their budget completely out of our budget or is this something we can get assistance from outside so uh, we've talked about this over the past couple of meetings, uh, and what we've put forward is uh, a financing, a five-year financing um, of the cost of the project to be paid back over that time period. Uh, so taking into account the cost of the lease in our current location, plus some additional funds uh, to cover that five-year payback. So we would be paying back who, ourselves, or? No, we would take out a let's let's say the total cost is two and a half million for round numbers we finance that over five years so we get a five-year loan or capital lease if you will a land lease they also refer to it uh, as uh, so we get that money up front we use those funds to then pay for the improvements to the building and then we create the payback schedule over five years so that we would be paying if it's two and a half over five five hundred thousand a year uh, to pay back that that loan half of which we come from okay. savings thank you we have here yeah. and as miss morris has noted half of which would come from the savings of not paying rent where we currently are i mean to that extent anthony was talking about if the board so desires we do have a resolution that um that would be to move forward with um uh, with the plans for Barack Obama, um, if that's if that's the board's desire, because I know that we've been going around talking about what we're going to do, and we really have to um, we have to we have to decide. I agree. We have to execute on something. something. Yeah, that's Barbalasinski. I agree. Put it on the agenda, and then have the vote uh, the board vote to see what direction they want to go in. Okay, uh, this is Joe again. Uh, really quick, what what were the estimated costs for the the other plan of having the modular um, things? I don't have it in front of me. Like two, it was two. All right, so the I believe it's around the same. The cost for the uh, rehab of of Obama was about two and a half million dollars. Uh, when we looked at our nine ten Second Avenue or nine fourteen Second Avenue. Uh, and then ask them to make adjustments uh, to to a modular unit. It came in between 2.1 and, and 2.5. So I guess the the big the 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 only difference is that you know if we do this um, if we do the the moving of the admin offices to the Obama School and we take over the third floor over there we've essentially you know 
staked our claim to the entire building. Whereas with the modular, it's, you know, it's, a, it's a, just a separate thing. It's a modular um, construction. Am I correct with that? Well, I think there's arguments for pros and cons on both sides, right? So if you had a module, then you have Obama to do all kinds of activities up and down. However, once you have the module and spend the money on the module, then we have to find money to fix Barack Obama. So, I mean, I, I know that we don't have a lot of time to discuss it. So there is, you know, there are good sides on both um, but as for establishing ourselves in Obama, again, it's it's a good thing because we'd be on the fourth, third floor. I just put another floor in Obama, don't worry. <laughs> we'd be on the third floor and then we can have activities on the second and first floor. Um, but again, everything is like we don't have unlimited funds. So it's basically like we have to decide what we're going to do because it's not like we have millions. We, we're, we're talking about taking a loan out to, to even move into Barack Obama. So if we were going to do the modular, we have to take a loan out to do the modular and then wouldn't have extra money to do anything in Barack Obama yet. So that's where we are. It's it's kind of like we have to make a decision where we, we have, we have a, a small bucket of money, you know, and then we have to figure out what we're going to use the bucket on. So I, I have a question because um, in reading that proposal, um, to do the grant writing, they had made said that the building was unsafe for staff, students, and visitors. So if we move the central office over there, when when will they start doing the work on the on the Obama building? I don't quite understand the question. Who when who start doing the work? I'm referring to the proposal that we had received from Charity Kings. So we're still talking about that. Are we not to some degree? No. Oh no. no. Okay. Okay, no. Okay. So uh, Madam President, I guess we should put it on the agenda for our public meeting and then we should uh vote. So we can have some direction. So your suggestion is to put on an agenda tonight? Yes, ma'am. The sooner we start, the quicker it gets accomplished. I agree with you there, Barbara. So are you making a motion? No, not right now. This is a work session. Oh, this is a workshop. Since you have the resolution, you can add it to the agenda. Oh. Barbara, can you repeat that? This is a work session and then the public session, you can, uh, the public meeting, you can add an item to the agenda, which would be this resolution at some time during the meeting. The other thing that I was gonna say is that if, it, Madam President, is it, is it appropriate to ask for a timeline for whichever one we choose like is it appropriate to, to ask for some sort of a timeline so we have an idea of what happened, what's going to happen when and in the, the time frame that we need to get done by i think it would be smart to ask for a timeline so we know you know what, what what we're dealing with so it's more than appropriate yeah um, so we're almost done. Let's do let's do um, curriculum and instruction, and then we'll move into the regular meeting. Miss Cook. Hi. Okay. So, in approval for the development and submission of the IDEA uh, CCLC Supplemental Fund Grant application. The purpose of this grant is to increase the presence of students with disabilities in this, the 21st CCLC after school program. And the amount of this award is $25,000. Um, the approval for the PIRT team to attend a weekly virtual training called the Pyramid Birth to Five Series. The training will provide the PIRT team formal training on the pyramid model, which they are required to facilitate um, professional development for all early childhood staff members annually. The total cost is $800 for all four members. Uh, lastly, the approval for Fatima McCoy Lin, uh, Leonard, a student at St. Uh, Peter's University 
Doctor of Educational Leadership Program to conduct research study at the Asbury Park High School. <laughs> the other thing that was brought up about the um the young lady from um uh, St. Peter's. Peter's um I never wanted to know if we could um have a copy of the research afterwards or like find what the end result was. Can I speak to that? I don't have that um, no no um madam madam, madam superintendent is gonna speak on it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. A uh, part of the doctoral studies and research is that anytime any research is done in this manner, it's anonymous and uh, to protect the researchers and the commentary. Mm -hmm. Also, as a part of fulfilling the requirements for the doctoral program, this research will be published and hence made available for anyone's review. But any indicators and referencing to the Asbury Park School District, and that doesn't just count for this one, no, but that standard from the no. Institutional Review Board, or otherwise known as IRB, that's just the, how research is done in um, in that setting. So in short, no. In short, in short, in short, anyone and everyone will have the opportunity if they want to research the dissertation to read it once it's published. However, any references to the Asbury Park School District will be left out. Okay, um, any additional questions or comments? Can I have a motion to close? I, ex excuse me, Madam President. I have, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Um, earlier, you had mentioned that our meetings are going to change from March. We won't going to. It's not going to be the twenty fifth. It's going to be the eighteenth and the eleventh. No, it's going to be the twenty fifth and the eighteenth. Okay, because I, I heard you. So the eleventh is not included. The the eleventh, so originally the workshops that are the Thursday night workshops had to be moved because on the eighteenth we're going to have a meeting for the preliminary budget. So we moved the 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 workshops that were going to be on the eighteenth we moved them to the eleventh. Okay, just uh, I may have to change my committee meeting on the tenth. I'll advise everybody. You you might have to move it to the tenth. No, I might have to move it from the tenth. I have a uh, surgery on the ninth. Your committee meeting is going to stay on that Wednesday. We're only moving the Thursday um, committees. Yeah, I'll advise everybody. I might have a I might have a problem. Okay. You know. All right. Thanks. Um. One more thing. I want to add to your thing. Okay. We have one more. Um. We have an addendum to be added. So uh, after our curriculum and instruction committee meeting was conducted uh, under Dr. Christy Howard Barnes' leadership along with the principal no. No. along with Principal Baumgartner from the high school. We were very fortunate to be approached by the New Jersey Manufacturing Extension Program. I have Dr. Howard Morris on the line. She's going to provide just a very, very brief overview. I did forward after conversation with Madam President uh, regarding the last minute agenda item because of the timing of the meeting to um, secure its placement on tonight's agenda. I forwarded uh, to every board member for your review. Uh, a little bit about the program. I did receive a question back about the program. I'm going to allow Dr. Howard Morris to give a little more explanation. Oh, good evening, everyone. Um, so, um, as Ms. Um, Gray stated, I was approached uh, with regard to a program for our seniors. So, um, by the um, New Jersey Manufacturing um, um, Program uh, Extension Program. And so, what essentially what it is going to do is going to provide our students with a national certification and two subject matters. One, they will have a um, opportunity to get 
a certification in the um, logistics as a logistics associate, uh, certified logistics technician, or they can get um, a certification in what's called the certified production technician. Uh, it's an online program. They'll have to complete between 80 and 100 hours. And uh, it's something that they can do um, outside of school. So um, when my son, I met with Ms. Baumgartner, what she wanted to also do is um, include the CTE teachers to also help if the, to get some hours with the students. But in addition to um, our staff, the program provides an, um, a staff member that will help them with their, um, with their studies. So, um, and that's free of charge. We don't have to pay anything for the program. Um, and after the students complete their, um, the program, the organization will help them um, find employment. They'll circulate their uh, resumes and they'll also um, provide them with um, jobs that are available for them to interview. And that's essentially, and the other part that we are able to utilize is when, because of some of our students, um, unfortunately, have a lot of um, buyback hours that they have to complete. And this would fall in line with our option two um, program at the high school where they can, you know, take the 80 to 100 hours and um, put that towards their buyback hours. Does anyone have any questions? And lastly, I just want to reiterate that this program is free, free at no cost to the district. The reason why it is included as an addenda is because it does require us to enter into a memorandum of understanding, which was also attached to the email for your review. Not, not to belabor this either, this is exactly um, some of what we've been talking about giving certifications and opportunities to our students that are not college bound or college is not their first choice. And it's coming at no cost to the district. Any comments or questions? Okay, so we have to do a quick uh, public participation. Um, so we're gonna open the floor up, uh, state your name, your address and your comment and or question. So we can take public comments through our public comment mailbox, public comment at asburypark.k12.nj.us. You can also raise your hand or post a comment in the comments section. And if you're a caller, you can hit star, I believe it's star three, and you'll put, put into the queue to uh, make a comment. So we'll give it a chance to populate. Uh, we did check the public comment email address and there are no public comments there. Mr. Brannigan, is there anything in our comment section or is there a caller in a queue? At this time, no one has raised their hand and there are no uh, entries in the chat. Okay, we're going to close the public comment section. We're going to close that at 7 10 p.m. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Second. Everyone, any, um, all in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. You are not opposed? You are can, we take, can we take a five, five minute break, just a five minute break before we open uh, public? No. Oh, yeah, what? <laughs> Okay, if the runs are bad, I'm sorry. Why don't you just get up and go? Carol, I heard that. Okay, we're going to pause for five minutes. It is now 7.10, so in five minutes we'll be back for the regular meeting. Thank you. Um, Anthony? Yes. During the meeting, you shouldn't be talking to someone else because you're it could be violating the sunshine law. It's a public meeting. Any other conversation outside the realm of the board would be could be a violation because okay. nobody can hear what you're talking about. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you might want to talk to um, Mr. Weiss about that. Okay. 
Okay, I will. I apologize. Barb. I'll be right back, Joe. Where are you going? I'm not telling you. Remy, I know you were just singing. Don't worry. Hey. I was doing the same thing. <laughs> I'd just like to remind everybody you're still uh, public and you're still being heard. So take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, we're back, guys. In accordance with the with the provision of the Open Public Meeting Act, NJSA ten. 4-6 PL 1975 C-231 S-1 amended in 2006 C-70 S-2, the Asbury Park Board of Education has provided adequate notice of this meeting by sending a notice of the time, date, location, and to the extent known the agenda of this, of this meeting to the Asbury Park Press and the new poster on January 8, 2021 via email. Copies of this notice have also been Place the administration building bulletin board, district schools, Asbury Park Municipal Building, Asbury Park Police Department, and filed with the city clerk on January 8, 2021. The mission of the Asbury Park School District is to provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education where everyone possesses the skill and character to proceed to succeed in a diverse, evolving global society. Roll call, please, Mr. Hastings. Oops. All right, as we take roll call, please unmute yourselves and put yourself back on mute. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Here. Ms. Breach? Here. Ms. Cook? Here. Mr. Grillo? Here. Mr. Lauderaca? Here. Mr. Remy? Here. Mr. Saunders? See you there. Okay. Uh, Ms. Lazinski? Here. And Ms. Etienne? Here. Can we all rise for the fly salute, please? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Joe, our resident flag presenter. <laughs> One day I'll get it right in the right, the, the right direction. <laughs> okay, so our presentation was already done, correct? Yes, our uh, annual review was done earlier. Superintendent's presentation? I have uh, no presentation, just some remarks. Our seventh annual Black History Month Extravaganza, which has been renamed our Black History Extravaganza, will now um, be in March. If the date has changed, it will be virtual March 12th. And as a result of the date change, we are also using that opportunity to incorporate Women's History Month. So we will have a Black History Women's History Extravaganza March 12th, and more information will follow. For your review. That's the eyes of March. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's a bad day. <laughs> so well, we're gonna put a new spin to it. <laughs> so um that that completes what I want, you know, what I was going to share tonight. Thank you very much. Do you have a I have a question? I'm I'm a a Black History Month and, and women did 
did our resident uh, awardee get to attend her ceremony prior to the meeting today? Yes, I did, actually. <laughs> Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, in my <laughs> Thank you. In my acceptance speech, I uh, mentioned that it's not possible to lead and do the work that I do without acknowledging the Board of Education, as well as the Blue Bishop family and um, members of my other organizations for which I am a member of. So thank you for assisting me and co-laboring with me in this work as we continue to change the trajectory of people's lives. That completes my report. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. So that's, that's Madam Superintendent's presentation and report. So now we will be moving on to the public participation part. Um, the floor is now open. Again, you'll uh, need to state your name and address. You'll have three minutes to make a comment. Uh, we have our public comment email address uh, that you can send an email to or you can post something in the comments or the raised hand function of the software here. Uh, or if you're on the phone, you can hit star three uh, to go into a queue and we'll recognize you there. We'll take a moment for that to uh, queue up. And right at this time, we have no uh, public comments in our public comment email address. Mr. Brannigan, do we have any comments or phone callers? At this time, there's no entries in the chat and no one has raised their hand. Okay, public participation is now closed. We're closing public at 722. Madam State Monitor, you will be receiving a uh, a report uh, shortly just updating um, the last exit report since the um, the issue of COVID, uh, I didn't feel that it was completely fair to do an in-depth. So um, you will see that there's an addendum to the last one uh, and that I have uh, submitted to the state and you will be receiving copies if you have any questions. Certainly at the next meeting, I would be more than happy to respond to them. Um, and that's the only thing tonight. Thank you very much. Um, acceptance of the minutes, Mr. Lincoln? Yes, could I have a motion for the acceptance of our minutes on page A1, 10A and B? Move it, okay. move it. Second. Joe, second. No, so Barbara, Barbara. Moved by Ms. Lozinski, second by Mr. Grillo. Any comments or questions? Ms. Kozinski? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Ms. Abbas Anderson? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Mr. Lotteraka? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes, and I finally got my I was, um, was it as computer literate as I thought I was. <laughs> well, we appreciate your efforts. Uh, Ms. Etienne? Yes. Okay. I uh, will not be presenting the minutes of the closed session because we didn't send them out to you for review yet. <laughs> Okay. At this point in time, um, I would like I, I would like to ask for percent agenda. Oh, please. <laughs> Madam Superintendent, I ask for percent. I would. <laughs> uh, good evening, members of the board, Madam President. I am requesting consent agenda for items B one to B five and all attachments. Move it. Need a second. Grillo, second. 
Moved by Ms. Lazinski, second by Mr. Grill. Comments, questions? Yes, roll call, please, Mr. Eason. B one through B five. And we have the addenda. Was the addenda included in those items as well? Yes, it is. Thank you, Ms. Lazinski. Yes. Mr. Grillo. Yes. Ms. Abez Anderson. Yes. Ms. Breach. Yes. Ms. Cook. Yes. Ms. Alatarocco. Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. All items carry? Mr. Hastings, would you like to ask for some questions? Yes, Madam President. Could I have a motion for all items C1, number one, to C3, number eight? I'll move it. Second. Second. Third. We have been moved by Ms. Lazinski, seconded by Mr. Lataraka. Any questions or comments? Roll call, please, Ms. Lazinski. Sorry. That's all right. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. Mr. Lataraka? Yes. Ms. Abez Anderson? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes, abstain on C25A. Thank you. Ms. Cook? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Ms. Breach? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. And um, I have to abstain on uh, JCPNL, New Jersey Natural Gas, New Jersey American Water, and any uh, reimbursements to me. Thank you. Mr. Remy? Yes. Mr. Saunders? Yes. And Ms. Etienne? Yes. All items carry? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, this, this concludes our meeting. Is there any additional comments? Um, anything anyone wants to add before we close? Madam President, Ms. Barbara Lisinski. Yes. I'd like to propose that you read the resolution regarding Obama, central office movement of Obama, so we can uh, move on. I don't have it. <laughs> I don't have it. Um, Mr. Hastings, do you happen to have a copy of that resolution? I do not. I do not have it, and I do not have a copy to read. Mr. Hastings had given me a paper copy last time. It's not even in my email. In that event, could, could we vote on it at the early March meeting? Yeah, we can we can do it on the 18th. Madam Vice President, can we do it on the 18th? Barbara. Question. Question. Uh, what, 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 what is it that we're um, looking for? You said the proposal? The resolution um, to move forward with uh, Barack Obama. It's to direct the administration to start the process to move central office to Barack Obama. If, uh, Mr. Lisinski, um, if you'd like, I, I don't know what document you're looking for, but if you, think you can orally make a motion, um, and I can walk you through it if need be. Sure. Make a motion at the board directs the administration to take the steps necessary to uh, start the process of moving from the office to the Barack Obama Elementary School, which would include um, plans, RFPs, aids, um, and financial um, 
uh, requirements that we have to, whether it's lending or uh, borrowing from whatever institution we need to. I, and if I could, you know, I, I'd like to add to that to make sure everything's covered. Um, and the board authorized the business administrator board secretary to take whatever steps are necessary to effectuate the um, this action of the board. All I would need is a motion. 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 Uh, second. 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 All right, so it's moved by Mr. Remy and seconded by, was it Mr. Ladaraka? Who was my second? Mr. Saw? Second. Yeah. You need to, uh, I need, Roll I need, call, uh, no, wait, 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 any discussion? Oh, yeah. Questions, discussion? Is, is it appropriate to hear? Is it appropriate to hear from uh, the, you know, to give some time for the board members to uh, discuss this a bit? We're open to discussion now. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and, uh, Okay, say it's in roll call. Mr. Remy? Here. It's a yes on the motion? Oh, yes, yes. Thank you. Mr. Saunders? Yes. Mr. Sabas Anderson? Yes. Ms. Creech? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. 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 Mr. Lauderaca? Yes. Ms. Lazinski? Yes. And Ms. Etienne? Yes. Motion carries. I'd like to make a motion to close this meeting, if I may. Second. Motion to close for Ms. Lozinski, seconded by Ms. Etienne. Ms. Lozinski? Yes. Ms. Etienne? Yes. Ms. Thomas Anderson? Yes. Ms. Beach? Yes. Ms. Cook? Yes. Mr. Grillo? Yes. Mr. Lauderaca? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Mr. Founders? Yes. Thank you. Meetings adjourned. Thanks. Hey, everybody. Stay well, everybody. Eating. Yeah, stay safe. Stay blessed. It's a vaccine. Yeah, have a good one. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.